This is our transfer roundup show for the week on the Anfield Wrap. I mean, there's a lot to round up these days. We did this first as an experiment, and the rounding up has never stopped. I've got John Gibbons, I've got Mo Stewart. Through this, we're going to be cutting from stuff that we've shot or recorded this week, bits and pieces about other players as we go all the way through. So do look out for that as it comes. You can get all of that stuff if you subscribe to the Anfield Wrap. Please do consider supporting us in any single way that you can. It's always appreciated. Um, it's not quiet. No. It's about to get louder as well, I think. I think it's getting it's going to get very loud. Yeah, um, I think the, the, the Henderson one is, 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 is you know, is, is, is funny if that is the word and that, you know, there's donking stuff. It's like, right, now he's going to have a big thing. And you're a bit like, now you're going to have a big thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's not been announced yet. So the longer it doesn't get announced, the more I feel that Dom, Dom is slightly vindicated. It is um, it big is, think theory. It is big think theory. Um, so, so that uh, I don't know what's going on with the Firmino stuff. Although that's the one that's always been a bit lighter on detail. Mm. Like all we know is the club and the and the um, the seller, the buying club. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and and that's sort of been about it. So you feel like that that one will just will just sort of come out of nowhere. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if if both of them were all wrapped up by the by the weekend because you know it, it, it should be really if 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 they're as far along as people sort of are saying. And then they've not got long. Like I'm in, I'm going to Singapore, as you know. I'm yeah. going to Singapore. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, I'm Singapore. And yes. I'm like determined to get as much in my life and work wrapped up. I keep saying to people, I'm going to Singapore. Uh, we need, can we get this sorted by? Can we have this meeting? Can we have this <laughs> conversation? But I think they'll be, but they'll be the same. Like surely George wants to go. It's his first one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's using this as an extended blag to say, you know what, I can't be bothered with Singapore. Yeah. I, need to, I need to do the back office stuff here. I've got a wedding on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's doing all that, but I don't know. Do you know? But I feel like... He's at the golf. He's <laughs> <laughs> on around us in the vines. Singapore just sort of feels like a bit of a market for me in terms of like, not necessarily, you know, lads, you know, being out on the trip, but, but just sort of like, you know, I think they'll, they'll want a lot more clarity by then. Uh, they fly out Friday, I think it is, Thursday or Friday, and so of next week. So that this time next week, I think will be a lot clearer. And I think the two lads will have gone. And if we haven't, I think we'll maybe have one in and have a bit more of a clear idea of who the other one is. So yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be lively. I think the maddest thing that could happen now is I think it's in Madison. Oh, that's a <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to that point. No, the maddest thing that could happen now was be if Jordan stayed. After all of this, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think he's able to come back now. I think too much has happened. But it feels a bit like the morning of a wedding, and he's saying to the best man, "I'm having second thoughts," <laughs> and the best man's going, "Fucking get off!" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's too late. You've um, got the suit on. Yeah, I've got this ring. Yeah. People have come from ages. I am not facing yeah. your auntie too. Yeah, yeah I'm trying yeah. to know what the fuck's going yeah. on. So yeah, basically that looks like it's done. Liverpool are literally already playing without them. We had a game yesterday, and neither of them were anywhere to be seen. So the planning has already begun. Um, the speed with which we can get it done is going to be the problem because, again, this is another summer where we're on the back foot with something. And it's really annoying because I feel like up until this point, we'd done okay. Maybe we hadn't done every step of the way that everyone wanted to, but we were in good shape going into the back half of the window. And then this kind of throws everything back up in the air. And so well, you... Let's start with what I think they were thinking which is they might have wanted to do one more, someone might have left, and then they were, I think they've been waiting on Colwell. So yeah. two, let's, let's actually pull the midfield back and let's just do Colwell for a minute, Mo. I think they've been wait, I think Liverpool's entire strategy on defence is there's one they really want, and if they can't get that one, they might do something else. And yeah. that was their plan, and I think that they've wanted Colwell. They've been waiting for Colwell to finish in the tournament to have a chat. He's had a chat with Chelsea. Chelsea have been really, really reserved in terms of their response to it. Do you feel as I think Liverpool could do with clarity on that because I think that that could knock onto budgets and other bits and pieces. Yeah. I think they could. They need to know whether or not they've got a fighting chance at Colwell. He is so good on the ball. He's more than happy to carry with it. He's left footed, which is actually quite a rare commodity for a centre back, um, and kind of puts a little bit of an extra premium on him or centre backs when you're trying to buy them. Um, he's intelligent. Like he's got leadership qualities that like you just don't teach. They're either there or they're not. Um, and on top of that, he seems like a guy that gets on with people pretty well. And I think sometimes, I think Liverpool are very good at that. They don't just sign people based on their ability. They also sign them on their personality. Um, and he's somebody that kind of fits that mould as well. As well, on top of that, I mean, he's a good, He it feels like he learned a lot under Brighton last season. Obviously, previously, he'd been at Huddersfield. 
build and it's been a good uh, campaign there learning but Brighton it really did feel like you learn a lot and adapted and, and learn what it was like to play with more an experienced Premier League defender like Dunk and playing under a system um, with De Zerbi, which is so tough like he went from a championship defender who looked promising um, and had a good campaign and could show that he could you know handle the championship to becoming an elite defender who can deal with tactical instructions and systems and that like, have confidence in the ball and run with the ball. And that is that is tough. Unfortunately, I feel like the clarity has just come in the shape of Wesley Fofana's ACL injury. I think if you're Chelsea, if you're Pochettino, you're like, I'm absolutely not letting any more out the door now because he's going to be gone for the whole season. Whether or not you need to bring someone else in to replace him is another matter. But there's rumours of Chelsea buying uh, the lad from Palace. Yeah, Mark Gahey, the guy who they let go uh, literally two seasons ago. And they've got a 50% uh, sell-on clause, so that means they can negotiate a lower fee. A lower fee, but I mean, the, and you, uh, but that incident with Fofana has literally proven why the knee needs both of them. <laughs> so I think if you're Pochettino, you're going into a new club, you're already a little bit unsure of who you've got and how many of who you've got are behind you in this new way. You need as many bodies as possible to kind of work out who's going to be good partnerships, who's not. So it feels to me like if I'm Liverpool, I'm saying, OK, we're going to have to put a pin in Levi Colwell and maybe when Fofana's back in 12 months' time, we can revisit this. Because the difference between... He'll have a year left on his deal. There, exactly. And, like that. and the difference between Pochettino saying to Colwell, well, look, you're going to play now, that might be good, but that's still not, oh, OK, I'm going to sign a new contract. It might be, OK, I'm going to play now and see how this goes. So I feel like there's a... There's a there's a world where Liverpool think that they can put that on the back burner. But the problem with that is, is that in 12 months' time, that we'll be saying goodbye to Joel Matip. So then the problem becomes a much more emergency, a much more urgent problem, rather than having the time to bed in and do a smoother transition. Where I think the Colwell thing or the midfield thing loops onto the defence thing, John, is what is the plan around Trent Alexander-Arnold in the new midfield setup? Links today with Verratti. I've been intrigued by Czech Kyoto, uh, not Kyoto, oh God, uh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> uh, by uh, Czech Decore, a, a Palace. Kyoto did play at Palace, for God's sake. It's not the worst, it's not the worst shout. We've uh, done worse. We've done worse. Uh, it, they're quite different players, and that's the th one of the things from the list, is one of the things about the list, is they are all actually quite different footballers in places, and I don't think... Liverpool might be looking necessarily for a nailed on sort of six foot two style number six who's going to get 35 league games. You know, I'm, I'm wondering if Liverpool have got something in the back of their minds that they are prepared to be a bit more creative, but then that could knock on to where Trent's going to play, that could knock on to whether or not they want a right back. It's, it is more questions than answers. It is, and it feels like if they get out of this well, it's going to be as much down to luck than it is judgment, to be honest with you. And, you know, Mo used the, the phrase sort of back foot, and that's where, where we've ended up, really. And, you know, you still looking at some other clubs around, like they, they, they go for one striker and they don't get him, and then they, they, then they go for a completely different one. You're like, what are you thinking? Like, how, how you jump from him to him? And, and that feels like uh, feels like a little bit of us. Obviously, we don't know all these things, whether they're, they're verified or whether they're actually there, but it does feel like, you know, they're, they're looking at it and thinking, well, we just need some midfielders who've got the kind of skills that we're sort of after. Mm. And at the, you know, and a, and, a, and a club who were, if not willing sellers, then at least but, not determined to rip us off. But the, the, for me, the questions, John, are, 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 are the questions that we don't have the answers to, but they might. And I think this is a key point, is what they expect from the existing footballers. Mm. Like, I think you can put a different question mark on Trent, on Curtis, on Elliot, on... Um, Thiago, yeah. uh, and maybe even to an extent still around something like McAllister in terms of where Liverpool think this football is going to feature. We expect to see, you know, Sabozlai in an attacking midfieldish role somewhere on the pitch. Yeah. But the others, you feel as though any of those, Curtis has just won a tournament with England playing holding mid. Yeah. You know, and this is, to me, this is why this is, there are vagaries around this. The, the manager himself, I think, he has the information to have an answer to, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And we just sort of don't at this point. I thought Trent does well yesterday, playing genuinely as six. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's really interesting how he cuts out the cross that's coming across the box, like coming, dropping back in like a it's centre like half. old school mm. defensive midfielder, isn't it? So, you know, that's what I think. I think that we, we can feel as though they're on the back foot, possibly. But I do sort of wonder whether or not they they slash he might have something in mind because they know these players and we've not thought of it. Yeah, I think also... Yeah, it, I agree with that, and I think another thing for me is, you know, when you talk about what are the plans for them, 
what Abby had just said, oh, is, does he feel like he's got a midfield that can start against Chelsea? Yeah. Like, that's an interesting one for me. But are we buying someone now? See, I'd like to, I'd love to buy a number six in the next week that I go, he, he can start against Chelsea. And that's not to say he necessarily will, because there's other factors yeah. at play, and, you know, wouldn't it be lovely to give everyone a bit of a thing? But but I, I'd love to. So that's why, I, you know, I'm, I'm quite into the Verratti links, because if, if you buy him, he's starting against Chelsea. You would have thought. Um, and, and then sort of from there. But is he looking at it and thinking, no, actually, do you know what? I feel like I've got a midfield who can start the first game. And, you know, if, if necessary, you know, because it is, it's not quite as mad a first as a Europa League has to start and stuff like like that mm-hmm. you know I feel like I've got a midfield for the first four games if he feels like he's got that and he's got a competitive one and wanting to get him 10 points from the first four games then you, you are then allowed to be I think a little bit more creative or a little bit more kind of okay well we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna buy some lads we're gonna be useful over next season don't get yeah. me wrong but also for the future as well and so I think that's a really interesting one for me too so where I'd love you, to know the answer to no but I said well, you trying to I'm gonna ask you what the other way you think the answer is <laughs> because I do think I think the manager's got strengths and weaknesses, all managers have, and at times strengths are weaknesses. I think he's a manager who always wants to back his boys, like, and that's always been what he's about. And I think, I think, for instance, he commits to Curtis in a way that, you know, a lot of people weren't thinking was likely. You know, that when he gets picked against Chelsea, I don't think anyone goes, and he's going to start every game from now until the end of the campaign. Yeah. And then he goes and does that. And I just sort of wonder whether or not he is going to be prepared to back his footballers in in ways that we might genuinely be quite surprised by, while still buying, I think, possibly another four footballers, I want to be clear, mm. as I think it's four more to come in. But I think there's a chance he's, he is thinking what you're sort of suggesting there, which is, all right, I, know, I already know I'm going to make this work. Yeah, it is. And funnily enough, the one for me that I'm really sure what he thinks of is Thiago, which is like the one you feel like you should be most about. Like, I think he'd be quite happy to pick Curtis Jones left. I think he'd be quite happy to pick McAllister right. I think he'd like not to pick Sebastian at the moment in, in that very first game and maybe look at him for Bournemouth or, or maybe even do something like he'd do under normal circumstances and just sort of ease him in even though he sort of cost all that money you know Alexis look, he looks ready now do you know what yeah. I mean like see Jota's face light up when he was asked about him like he'll do for me yeah. and, and, and they'll all be saying that Mo will be like oh, oh why did you get him in your ass do you know what I mean <laughs> and so like straight away like McAllister start in that first game and I think he does it in advance also I think he plays right I think Curtis Jones plays left in that game as well if I was to pick up the CDO. The, the question is deeper than that. Will he trust Thiago in that role? You know, mm. alongside sort of like Chamberlain. Uh, Chamberlain, he's gone. He's not picking it. Uh, <laughs> Alexander Arnold. Feel likely. Yeah. We, we, does he feel like he can go with that for the, for the for the first few weeks? If he does, then I think it does give you a little bit of a leeway because a it goes okay. Well, there's someone we really want. We feel like we can go late into August because that's what I always forget. Well, it's yeah. first of September, isn't it? Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, the we, first. We looked into it. Um, and so, so it gives you a bit of leeway that way, but also with whoever you bring in, it'd be great if he doesn't need to completely hit the ground running, but, but I think he might have to. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? It's like you want to give them the best possible chance to succeed, and by asking them to definitely straight away be a starter and be influential. And you're 20. Yeah, I mean, we saw it with Cody Gakpo. When he first came in, it was like, okay, great, you're, you're going to do the CS stuff, there we go, off you go. I'm the team shit. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it was a bit like, um, uh, are, we, are we sure about this? Yeah. Is this definitely Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he got his feet under the table a little bit, kind of moved inside, and obviously off he went. So you are kind of make, you are making the margin for error smaller if you're looking for someone to go straight in. It's difficult, though, because... All of those questions about to say around Curtis, I do think he's going to be integral. I wonder though, is he has he given him enough rest? Because he was the latest one come back, and he's, he's coming back what today? Today, yeah. Today, I mean, he's obviously he's going to have to have a look at him. They're going to have to manage him because obviously health and fitness was still a big reason why it's taken him so long to get to where he is. But he hasn't played that many games, I'd say, in the last eighteen months. No, no, he hasn't. So if he is okay physically, then yeah, crack on. I think. But then, I mean, we talk about... By the about, way, I reckon Curtis hates you saying that. I know. Because he's walked into the, today and gone, I'm playing Monday, lads. <laughs> Possibly captain, I believe there could be a big <laughs> I'm just, I'm just one man's opinion. Yeah. If, if Klopp says at the start of the season, Curtis is the man in possession, Curtis is the man in the shirt, I'm going to be like, fucking brilliant. Yeah. But I, that season question still to be answered. Obviously, with Thiago and Bicetic, neither of them have actually started training yet, have they? No. no. So, again, you've got to hope that they're, by the time we get to there, that they're ready to go. So... These are part of the reasons why you might need someone to come in and at least be effective in the first game because you might be shorter the numbers than you are so later on in the season. Yes. Do you like him? 
I do. Decore, uh, Czech Decore has become uh, one of the names that's gone around and I didn't do it, so I thought we'll follow up. Um, so here is Decore uh, up against on the DM question uh, radar that I created, which doesn't have absolutely all the information I'd like uh, on there, but has a fair bit. Uh, this is him as, as a Crystal Palace player up against the league average last season. You can see his passing is just above the league average. His pressured pass is about right. The progressions aren't particularly high, but we might come back around onto that in a second or two. And you can see in there he's strong on ball recoveries and strong on opposition ball recoveries as well. His defensive actions and his counter pressures are down a little bit, but I think there's a thing here where we have to remember that these footballers are given jobs. He may not want uh, the, the, the Palace manager, whether it was Vieira or Hodgson, might not want him doing counter pressures in the opposing half for instance, and he goes from there. Aerial percentage wins, not that high. 51st percentile, uh, a bit below the league average in general. That's him at Crystal Palace, but Palace buy him, and they buy him from Lon in France. Lon were promoted uh, a couple of seasons ago, uh, and I've got his first season back in uh, League 1 with Lon uh, when he's 21 years old, to Corey. And what's really interesting is the passing is strong. Passing percentage is uh, 87%. Uh, pressured pass uh, percentage is approximately just, just around the league average. Deep progressions is up. And again, this is the idea of what it is that we're asking the footballer to do. He's still there on his tackles and his interceptions. He's still there on stopping dribbles. He's still there on ball recoveries. But it was a different role that he clearly had at Lon. Uh, and he performs relatively well in the context of a Takore. Look forward again uh, to his second season back up playing for Lon. And you can see here again, passing percentage is better. Pressured passing percentage is really high. 94th percentile suggests he keeps the ball well when under pressure. Uh, 80, 87% of his pressured passes completed. And then his deep progressions has gone up again as well. 7.03, 86th percentile. Now on this time, a lot of the more defensive ones around there, the dribbles, the recoveries, they're all down a little bit. The point is, is that Takore has shown here in this second series, second season at Lon, that he may well uh, be the sort of footballer who's got the idea of being progressive within him, uh, and he shows a Crystal Palace that he can do the scrappy stuff as well. I mean, it's strange because it's going to feel like I'm an absolute charlatan by saying it because I didn't say anything about him last summer when he moved to Palace, but he There's is. There's only so many players you can talk about, though. And to be fair, like the guy who played alongside him at Lon's second for Fana, he's very much the headline grabber of that midfield. So I was kind of more blinded by him. But yes, I do think he's a good player. I think he's one that could potentially grow into exactly the kind of dominating player in that position that we had in Fabinho. I think the problem is, now the Palace also know this, and he was very, very good for them last season, and they are absolutely not going to want to let him go. Yeah. Um, so we're in a situation, as I said before, we're on the back foot. So if we decide he's the guy, then we are going to have to pay more than we should for him. But can I just sort of say on the back foot thing, one of the things that the back foot thing hits me, strikes me with is that, again, in the same way that, for instance, at times, strengths and weaknesses, sometimes weaknesses are strengths. And one of the things I think is because Liverpool may well want, they're open to so many. Mm. The idea of being, if a club thinks for a second, we can sort of hold these over a barrel. I just think one of Liverpool's powers here is being able to say, thanks for that, see you later. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, be able to disrupt a number of players. I mean, whether we like that or not, the idea of Liverpool, like if you're to Corre, you may not get another chance to move to a top six club. It's possible that that's the case. Or you might be able to say that's a palace, like this is it. Yeah. This is, this is, you bought me in for a reason. You were always going to flip me. It, it happens now, I've impressed, and, and these want me now. Why? I, and he's just one example. There could be another four or five of them that are knocking around Europe. True. People are knocking on doors and going, Liverpool are interested, you know. And the clubs might be going, well, they haven't been in touch in any way. But <laughs> Liverpool are able to say, this is it, this is what we're prepared to offer. And if not, there's another 10 lads. There is. And I think in terms of the kind of variety of the names that we've been linked with, I think that comes into the fact that we are technically replacing Henderson and Fabinho. Exactly, yeah. So we do need a kind of a wide range of footballers or skill sets across those two. I agree with that as a strategy. The problem is, is like I was saying before, it's harder to play chicken or play in this kind of transfer world because there's those other guys over there who will literally don't care about chicken. They'll just kind of put their money on the table and be like, OK, well, we'll have him then. And if they decide to do that enough times, suddenly there isn't enough options and you're having to pay more for a player that you probably was only talking or third on your list rather than going out and getting the guy. But like what you were saying about a weakness being a strength, one way that might work, whereas FSG may have been reluctant to maybe sanction those kind of deals now, the fact that their two most influential midfielders have gone means that we can't go into it with no one. Like, like no one is definitely not an option. 
So times where they might have bought at certain prices or certain things, now they might actually just do it. I've got a big theory they should recruit for 442. Not necessarily play 442, maybe not even play 442 very often at all. I think they should recruit for 442 because I think it'll give them the most leeway in the long run because this isn't just, this is looking to build something over a period of time. Like how many, if you were, imagine building a squad for 442, how many centre midfielders do you think you need to do that? You know, they've got a left wing, left winger, left mid in Diaz, a right winger, right mid in Sabozalai, they've got cover on the right in Elliot, but we know that these lads can also play central and play in a different shape. Mm. Diaz moves up front for us. If you take Diaz out the equation, there's four forwards, but then it might well be if you're seeing Trent as a centre mid, and this is what I mean, you've then got to go and get a right back. The yeah. Pavard thing's been dead interesting this week where the start of the week he's linked to a city, and then by Wednesday everyone's back to Liverpool. And I can't help but remember your conversations uh, with, uh, with any one of your many German Christian friends. Falk, really. <laughs> Christian Falk just repeatedly said, Liverpool are genuinely interested in Pavard, you know, it's yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I think Pavard would be great, and I think he'd, he'd, he'd give everyone a big boost in terms of like the you know the supporter base and stuff like that. You know, in terms of someone like that, you know, with his with his reputation, his ability, sort of coming in, and someone who, you know, is still delivering at a very high level for Bayern, who just just sort of fancies going off and doing something else. And so, I think I think that one, you know, would, would be one that if Liverpool could do, you know, it's big wages, but not necessarily a, a huge a huge sort of fee because of his contract situation. I mean, we've just got two big wages off the wage. Yeah, board. exactly. And so and so that's maybe where, where the Verratti ones come yeah. from. And say, like, well, we can, you know, because he's he's I reckon he's on decent money in Paris. He's, he's getting paid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's been there a while as well. Yeah, so he's yeah. had quite a few extensions. He's, he's had a few chains of contract. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? he's had a few negotiations. Yeah, and so he's, he's gone through the, the pay thresholds. <laughs> um, Great. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think he's sort of getting away there, but maybe he feel he could do it. I, the one that I would do is, is, is Amabat personally, because I think, not that I think he's an amazing player, and I'm slightly worried that, like, what, I don't really, you know, when he's one of them, it's like, well, why has no one bought him yet? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Fiorentina have, have, have never seen at least he's had huge amounts of money. You know, everyone knows about him, you know, especially off the back of the World Cup and stuff like that. I thought he was really good uh, in the in the final against West Ham. I thought he, you know, he, he had a good, good performance in that. And so, so my only thing is, well, well, what, 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 what are these people who know more about football than me looking at? I think it's sort of not for him. But I think, I think if he got him, A, I think he could start against Chelsea. Mm-hmm. And B, I think it allows you to be a bit more, you can take a bit more of a risk with your second one. Um, in terms of the, the, the fee, in terms of the profile and stuff like that, and so if we're, if we're all saying we want we want to, then I think I think he allows you to to, to be a bit more sort of to take a bit more of a risk with your second. Mm. That's my opinion. that's my opinion. I think that's I think that's mad. I just I wonder about whether or not where Liverpool feel as though there is or isn't value. I think there's something in the idea of the players who were fashionable three or four years ago who maybe either didn't get a move or things are a little bit different for. I'm about sort of a little bit in that category. I think the other thing is the Verratti link is just really madly in my head. And the reason why is because I think if you do Verratti, you are saying that you're not going to play with that sort of idea of the lighthouse number six that mm. we've played with and other teams have played with. But I still think you need someone in the squad which could be Amrabat or could be someone else a bit left field and a bit mad. I keep coming back to Ndidi's numbers and I don't like Ndidi. He's not the sort of football that I want to watch. But if Liverpool wanted to feel as though they could for certain games, whack someone in who is a pure destroyer. Mm. You could just sort of go, well, you're getting Ndidi for not much money at this point from Leicester. They just got relegated, for God's sake. This is not me making an argument for Ndidi. No. More for the concept of that sort of footballer yeah. who was a bit of the rage four or five seasons ago. Or... If or you even, don't want a nailed on starter, but you want an option. Or even like Ibrahim Sangari from PSV. Yeah. Who's, who, who kind of was the hot well, I just thought it gone, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I was like, I thought so, I someone bought him. Yeah. He, he, he was the hot guy of last summer, or maybe even two summers ago. Two summers ago. I thought it was you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. In, in, in the midfield. <laughs> right. like, uh, Mo and Get Lucky are always the same. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Mo playing, Get Lucky. Yeah, well. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another level. Uh, but. I think you're right in terms of the idea of someone of that ilk who can come in and be almost like a safety pie, so then you can go out and be a little bit more adventurous. I have to kind of put my um, doubts in about Verratti though. Like, obviously he's a quality player, but he is literally the Italian Tiago. Like, we would be buying. I agree, I think, it's, I think it's absolutely hysterical. Like, he's been at PSG 10 years. Do you know how many times he's played 30 league games? Oh. Got to say zero times. One, one time. One time. Oh, one time. Oh, that's not good. No, and I feel like 
we should that that's one lesson that we should have we should learn we need to learn because as great as Thiago has been yeah Alexis been as much much of a we like him as a player but he's just not on the pitch you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and, and we've seen his wages yeah. and look 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 I mean we've, we've just let go of two guys who that was their life for most of their Liverpool career I'd quite like to not have to say that anymore so I think that that should be a bigger issue than kind of like on the risk reward scale because we've been burnt before. I mean, if he comes in and he suddenly he comes to Iron Man for Liverpool, then happy days. But I just don't see it. Don't see it. Uh, loads and loads to get through. Loads and loads of players to talk about. Lots is going to happen across the next 10 days or so. Subscribe to the Anfield app for all the transfer insight that you need. It's three audio gutter shows a week. Uh, there is something like this happening. We did the stats thing earlier in the week. We'll do more of that sort of thing as the thing moves right the way along. Uh, there'll be loads and loads of videos as well. Subscribe to the Anfieldapp.com forward slash subscribe. Do it through the app. Anywhere you want to support us. Uh, it is all always appreciated. It is a transfer roundup show and trust me, it is not the last one. <laughs>